If you have ever had any interest in an all-clad D3 frying pan, this is the video for you. We've got in-depth information, a big review, and a ton of cooking tests. Show you how this thing performs in the real world. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. You know, I want to say one thing about the D3s right up front, and that's that people who have D3 frying pans love D3 frying pans. I review a bunch of pans around here, and lots of times when I put up a review, I will get pounded by the D3 people. They will say, have you tried a D3? You got to try a D3. I love my D3. Try a D3. So guess what? I tried a D3, and I like it. I like it a lot. So let's jump right in and take a look at this pan. It arrives in a nice box. I really do like a nice box, a nice presentation. That first impression, it kind of sets the stage, sets the expectations for quality. So I like a nice box. This one came with a lid. I paid right around $125 for this thing. As of when I'm doing the video, these fluctuate between 120 and 130, usually with a lid. And occasionally you will find a screaming deal where these things are on sale for somewhere around $100. And if I see one at $100, I will probably buy another one. 12 inch model, it's a tri-ply pan. It has a stainless steel cook surface and underneath is an induction compatible stainless steel exterior. In between is a thick layer of aluminum. Aluminum is almost as good as copper when it comes to heat conductivity. So that's good to have all that aluminum in there. Weighs in at a little bit under three pounds. That's kind of a medium, lightish, medium weight pan. And that's good if you like to move things. Flip, are you a flipper, are you a shaker? If so, then a pan in this weight range is gonna be nice for you. Has uh, two rivets, no helper handle. It's not heavy enough to really need a helper, helper handle. And it has a stainless steel oven safe handle with a thumb groove in there. Now I'm not going to opine too much on the look of all clad handles. Every time I say something about it, I kind of get pounded by the all clad fans out there. Um, I think they're a little bit plain Jane, but some people really, really love them. Definitely functional though, and works just fine. Let's go ahead and jump into some of the cooking tests. And the ones I've chosen here are ones that I think show off what the D3 can really do. I've been cooking in this thing heavily for about six months now. We're gonna cook on gas, electric, and induction. The first thing I wanna show is cooking some fried okra on the gas cooktop. And what this illustrates is that the D3 has good heat conductivity. That aluminum core spreads the heat really well. Here you can see that the okra is sizzling and frying edge to edge. Second, a lot of people have trouble with food sticking in stainless steel. But if you cook foods like okra at the correct temperature, they will be non-stick. Next up, some bone-in skin on chicken thighs. Got these salted and peppered. Got the pan preheated. Got some hot oil in there. In the chicken thighs go. The pan holds four supermarket kind of GMO mutant big chicken thighs easily. After a few minutes on the skin side, I flip them and you see nice browning. And also what I want to show here is that the pan can go from stovetop to oven to finish the cooking. That stainless steel handle is oven safe. It can handle higher temperatures in the oven. And we finished up those chicken thighs nicely. Now how about some weeknight pork chops with lemon and asparagus risotto. The 12 inch model easily holds four boneless pork chops. You could probably get a fifth in there if you wanted to. And you see that the pan produces nice even browning and served with a little lemon and asparagus risotto makes a great weeknight meal. Scrambled eggs in the all clad D3. Just use some butter and cook them at the correct temperature and no sticking, they turn out delicious. These fried eggs cooked in bacon grease were not non-stick. I had to use a spatula, but these were also delicious. Now how about some bacon? <laughs> Gonna cook a few pans of bacon here. And what I wanna show here is my bacon. Nice, laid out nicely, orderly. And here is my wife's pan of bacon. What is going on in there? It's absolute bacon chaos. 
but these stainless steel D3 actually produce nice non-stick bacon. The way you get non-stick bacon in stainless steel is simply to start the bacon off in a cold pan, give it an early flip, and then cook it as normal, and it's non-stick. We've cooked on gas so far, now let's take a look at cooking on the flat top, starting out with the induction burner. And here I made a big mistake. I cooked some hash browns and they stuck like a duck. But it turns out normally I despise the induction burner, but this time it was my fault. I didn't have the potatoes dry enough. I didn't have the oil heated up properly. I didn't have enough oil in there. So dejectedly, yet with a sense of grim determination, I marched to the potato box, grabbed a peeler, and got back to work. And here we see the same pan, same bottle of oil, same burner, about an hour, hour and a half later, and these potatoes are non-stick. They are sliding around and browning nicely. And the difference here is that I cook them at the correct temperature. So pro tip here, always cook your food correctly. Over on the electric flat top, cook several things here. Uh, here I'm browning some Italian sausage for pizza toppings for pizza night. That went well. Also another pan of bacon. And I got nice even heating and good results on the flat tops. It seemed to work well on both the induction and the electric. Just preheat the pan properly. Back on the gas, a pan of salmon croquettes. Occasionally get a craving for these. And what we see here is that the pan has good capacity and it's doing a nice job of browning. Now before we get to the grand finale, a quick note on cleanup. You can sometimes get big messes in these stainless steel skillets. Um, if you cook bacon, if you see your meat at higher temperatures, there's going to be some mess. And once you clean your pan, if there's a little bit of that weird film left in there, a lot of times white vinegar will take it out. When you do high temp searing, there's going to be some burnt on oil. It gets sticky, will not wash out easily, and for that, you either need some barkeeper's friend or some of this dedicated all clad stainless steel cleaner, something like that. And it has micro abrasives in it, and that plus a little bit of elbow grease will get your pan looking shiny and new again. But there is a little bit of maintenance with stainless steel. Now I have a buddy, he and his wife just renovated their kitchen, and they asked me about getting a set of cookware, and asked me what I thought they ought to get. And what I said is, set your base level at D3, and then go from there kind of as budget and needs dictate. And you can't go wrong. And then if you want to add something fancier, you can do that down the road, a copper or whatever. Now you will often see some screaming deals on sets of this all clad D3 cookware. So advice here, make sure the set includes a 12 inch frying pan. Often they don't, or Make sure the set is such a screaming deal and a low price that you can easily add a 12 inch frying pan on top of that. So the 12 inch pan is going to be one of the main workhorses in your kitchen. So if you look for a set, make sure it's got a 12 inch or else make sure it's such a screaming deal that it's no big deal to add a 12 inch on top. And for the grand finale, let's do a high temp sear test with these big, thick ribeye steaks almost $70 for two steaks. Can you believe it? With these guys though, worth every penny. Got the pan on a cranked up gas burner. Pan is really hot. In go the steaks and nice sizzle there. And I note that these two steaks are over a pound each and they fit in this 12 inch D3 nicely. And the pan maintained a sear. I give those a good two minutes or so on the first side. Look at that crust, that's a very nice crust. Flip them over, and after another minute or so, I start basting these with butter. And these steaks are so thick that we're going to also finish these in the oven, going stovetop to oven with the steaks. And these turned out absolutely deliciously. The D3 did great with a high temp sear. Okay, I really do like this all clad D3 stainless steel frying pan. Been cooking in it heavily for about six months now. So it's part of my go-to frying pan rotation. It's easy to move around, seems to be well made, and most importantly, it produces a ton of delicious food. It gets a thumbs up. As always, leave your questions, comments, and feedback below. Subscribe to the old channel here if you enjoyed this video and wanna see more like it. Look somewhere on this screen for links to other videos you might enjoy. Check out the shopping links if you want to get one of these for yourself. Thank you for watching. See you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.